Jelly bean update! I can hold him now. Look at that. How many species of penguins are there? 27? I thought it was 13. Or maybe there's only 13 warm weather Edit ones. that part out. <laughs> We're not using that. Whatever, dude, that group is such a joke. They're all gonna come after you now. <laughs> I don't care. It's but literally hillbillies in their rats have bathing with alligators. <laughs> like. Welcome back to another episode of 10 Minutes with TikTok. It's been a hot minute since we've done one of these. Uh, so as you can see by the title today, we are talking about the emotional support alligator Wally. Well, kinda. But we do want to talk about that, um, but we don't want to just spend the whole time uh, just kind of being negative about that situation, right? We get asked about it all the time and other situations, and we do want to give our opinion on these situations, but we also do not want to be categorized as just the negative people who are just downing something the whole time, which unfortunately with most big things in the media with an animal, people are usually doing it wrong. <laughs> so when we give our opinion, it's always negative. That's not our fault. That's just how the situation is. Right. So we're going to touch upon Wally and then really hit hard as to why alligators don't make good pets and why actually in a lot of situations it is abusive. So if you haven't heard about this, there's uh, Wally the emotional support alligator, right? And so this is just, this is a situation where there's a gentleman that was suffering from severe depression and uh, he found his escape from depression by having this alligator as his pet, right? Um, and you know, we don't want to... Uh, I feel like every time we do one of these, the birds are just going crazy in the background. Yeah, well they always are. And so yeah, so anyways, um, so in this situation, the guy found his escape from depression by having this alligator and taking care of it, okay? And um, we are glad that he was able to escape his depression and we don't want to take away from the fact that he had a legitimate issue that he was able to overcome. And we think that is great. Uh, but. No, we do not agree with the, methodolo the methodology of which he did that, right? So, uh, just flat out, we are very much 100% diametrically opposed to emotional support alligators. Yes. This is not a good idea. It is not a good idea for people who do not understand alligators and can get themselves hurt. And as we're gonna spend the majority of this video talking about, we are very much opposed to it on behalf of the alligator. Right. Now, luckily, this gentleman does know about alligators and he looks like he has a lot of reptile experience and it's very clear that he loves his animals. But the problem is when you go on a public platform like Beast Buddies um, and tell the whole world that you have an emotional support alligator, that's all people hear, and then it encourages people to kind of want to do the same thing. Jelly Beef! So in some states, it is totally legal, like Pennsylvania, to go and just buy an alligator. You don't need a permit. You don't need any experience. Which should um, be illegal. Right. That should not be allowed, right. by the way. I'm I don't think anybody should ever be able to just go out and buy an alligator. That yeah. should be illegal. Not even because people can get hurt, it's because the animal suffers for it. In a state like Pennsylvania, you're not going to be able to properly care for an animal. 99.9% .9 of people are not going to be able to dedicate, I mean they really need more than an entire room. Even an entire room in somebody's house is not adequate for a full grown alligator. Right. So you see a lot of these people, especially on, I'm part of this Facebook group, Alligator and Crocodile Keepers, and I joined it expecting to see other professionals and like their enclosures and how everything was set up and it's literally just a bunch of people from Pennsylvania buying baby hatchlings, like cuddling with them, like look how much it loves me and like taking baths with their alligators and it's just, not only is it like super disrespectful to the animal, it's just like, that animal is not happy. <laughs> that animal is definitely not happy. So a situation that arises a lot is because, uh, and well this can apply to any kind of animal, or not any, but many kinds of animals, is because they're not able to voice how they actually feel, we put our own emotions and our own uh, interpretation of how they feel onto them. and because most people don't understand these animals, let's say alligators for an example, uh, I can say, oh my God, he loves me so much. And look, he loves my cuddles and he loves my Same kisses. 
Yeah. Literally, right now, you can say, oh, she oh, loves you. Yeah, okay, so yeah, exactly. TikTok is on my face, or was on my face a moment ago. That's because TikTok loves me and is cuddling against my face. Like, no, that's because TikTok is currently exploring the situation and trying to figure out where TikTok can go, and that's why she just went up the side of my face. She's not cuddling my face. And so, because the snake cannot say that on its own, and because most people are not educated enough upon the behavior of these animals to be able to make any kind of really uh, definitive argument against it, then obviously it's true. If they're saying it and it looks kind of like it, then it must be true because nobody is educated enough on the subject to really argue it. Now, most, I mean, not even most, all alligators born in captivity, raised in captivity, have some sort of metabolic bone disease. And unless you know what you're looking for, you're not gonna understand. So we're gonna show a picture uh, side by side of like a wild alligator and what their faces should look like. And then an alligator that is either stunted Saw. or has metabolic bone disease. Let's let's do my photos of Saw. Well, Saw is a really, really bad case. But even in cases where the animal's not neglected, even when animal the alligator has the best care, for example, uh, raising them from hatchlings in Florida and feeding them a varied diet of crustaceans and crock chow and chicken and bones and whole prey, they still get metabolic bone disease, even if it's just slight. Even at AZA facilities with literally the best captive care, the most up-to-date current knowledge on captive care for crocodilians, you will see animals exhibiting metabolic bone disease. And right. we don't know why and we don't understand it, but we know that it is a thing. Now how far that MBD goes is going to really depend on that care though. So even in the best care, you're gonna see some of it, but there's definitely worse cases than others like Saw, we'll show her. Uh, that is a situation of very severe metabolic bone disease. So how does this manifest? Quite a few different ways, but the big ones that we see that are extremely visible for one, stunted growth. Everybody's got a pet alligator in, you know, and they're like, oh, this is my baby alligator. He's 20 years old. It's like five feet. And four to five feet long. Now, to put that in perspective, that animal could be over 12 feet at that same exact age. But you'll almost never see anybody with a pet alligator that's over eight feet. Right. Now, some, some places that know what they're doing, of course they do, but among like the pet alligators, you know, you'll almost never see them over eight feet. Meanwhile, most alligators under any normal situation will get over that size within, you know, 20 years or so. Right, and you can tell that an alligator has metabolic bone disease by looking at the face. The face definitely looks um, wider, bulkier, and the teeth usually go out, even if it's just slightly. In some cases, you can really tell, but even if it's just ever so slightly, the, the teeth aren't up, they're just like pointed well, out. So the, well, the best way to put that- And the that... teeth also aren't as big. Yeah. Okay, so the best way to explain that though is that on a normal wild alligator, you should not, when the alligator's mouth is closed, you should not be able to see any of the bottom teeth protruding. Now, we do catch some wild alligators that do have a couple weird, you know, like maybe he needed braces kind of thing. So that does happen, but the point is that for the vast majority, 90 something percent of all wild alligators, if his mouth is closed, you cannot see any of the bottom row of teeth because the bottom row fitness sockets in the upper jaw, right? Now, on these captive alligators, these pet alligators, you will see all the time, almost all of them. You're gonna see either five or more or all of the bottom row of teeth going like this instead of like this, right? And when you actually look at the skull of one that's passed away, you'll see that the tooth root, the jaw bone itself is horrifically deformed where instead of this, imagine your teeth going out like this. Imagine closing your mouth and your teeth don't touch, your gums hit but your teeth don't because they're sticking out so far like this. That is how almost all these alligators look. And uh, some of the alligators have such bad metabolic bone disease, they can't open their mouths all the way. If you look at Chris's videos, a healthy alligator should be able to open its mouth all the way to the point where you can see the glottis. Which Again, is... Saw, we can clip in. Right. We, so with Saw, we're gonna talk about her a lot. She's the best example. She came from Missouri and she was raised as a uh, as a pet alligator and then was given to a rescue there and eventually made it down here. Uh, but anyways, I had to hand feed her with tongs. She was dying when we got her. I mean, just completely emaciated, um, horrible metabolic bone disease, but she couldn't even eat on her own because her mouth doesn't open up enough and her teeth do not touch. They just flare out like this. Right. So I had to hand feed her with tongs to even get her to be able to survive because so her, she, her mouth she can't can only open. open like that. She can't that even much. bite you. Right. But she's like a really bad case. But even even with other alligators, if you start paying attention now and seeing alligators that are raised in captivity, their mouths may be open like, like that much, you know? 
But like I said, like if you look at his videos, the gator should be able to open the mouth the entire the entire right. way where you can see the glottis. Yeah, any any wild alligator is going to be able to do that, yeah. right? Um, under normal wild natural uh, care, right? But. Again, in this pet alligator world, so we have stunted growth, we have really horribly messed up teeth, really horribly messed up jaw and bone and skull structure. They have really fat, broad heads, a wild alligator. We call it a farm face uh, in the business. So uh, the normal wild alligators have more elongated jaws, so that's normal. Uh, but these farm face gators have a fat a face. giant fat head. Yeah, a fat head that's not normal at all. I mean, just. Imagine as a human, I'm looking at you, we're sitting side by side, my teeth cannot touch when I close my mouth, and my head is like twice as broad as hers. Like that's what this looks like. It's insane. And so I'm of the opinion that's animal abuse. Right. It is. And I hope that if you are out there and you own an alligator, instead of getting offended, you genuinely take what we're saying into consideration and start thinking about the animal and what's best for the animal because I feel like a lot of these people especially on this Facebook group I'm telling you it is crazy uh, they don't really care about they're animals all gonna come after or, you now. or I know whatever dude that group is such a joke they're all gonna come after you now. <laughs> I don't care it's but, literally hillbillies and their rats have bathing with alligators <laughs> like <laughs> well so so let me let me let me uh, just kind of rephrase that a little bit so um MBD happens in almost all captive care situations. Now, the degree of which this MBD happens and how much control you have over preventing that is where I would say becomes an animal abuse situation. Right. So um, the fact that it happens everywhere means obviously not everybody's being abusive. Right. Um, but the fact that there is varying degrees of it and some of them are really bad where you're just, again, having your baby alligator live in a bathtub and feed it hot dogs all day, that's abuse. Okay. Well, I purposely follow along these people that, cause it will be the same people posting every day. Like, look at my baby alligator, look at my baby alligator. And then like six months later, they're like, it's too big. Can someone else take it? And that's just irresponsible too, because how many legit people and facilities in Pennsylvania are able to take an alligator now that is like three feet or four feet. That's like, I feel like that's the most difficult size to find a home for because nobody wants alligators that size. Yeah, but oh. that's like the size that everyone, especially in Florida, everyone's trying to get rid of. Because so, in Florida, you're allowed to own an alligator uh, without two and a half acres as long as you have your permit if it's under four feet. So all these people get alligators and then once they hit four feet, they're scrambling trying to find a facility to put this alligator. That is, by the way, why Chris and I don't have alligators. We can have an alligator right now. We both have over a thousand hours of experience. We both know obviously what we're doing with animals. Um, we don't have an alligator at the house because I think it's kind of like irresponsible to get an alligator when you don't own property. Right. Because then it becomes someone else's problem when it's four feet and like we don't want to do that or support that personally. But because the laws are becoming very strict and we don't have the property yet and we're going to, we are looking at getting that permit. But, <laughs> but just because we have the permit doesn't mean that we have to keep anything. No, I think you do to have it active. I don't know. No, I'm, uh, I don't know. So yeah, right now, currently, what's going on in Florida is absolutely ridiculous with all the laws they're trying to quite literally ban everything and we've had quite a few people who are up there um tell us that we need to get our permits at our house even right. though we don't want to for the reasons just stated but we're probably going to have because to you're going to need to be grandfathered in because eventually they're going to stop issuing out permits and then that means we can never have our yeah sanctuary. so i just wanted to say that because if somebody sees this video right. and you know a year from now we have them because we had to for the permit and they're right. like oh you're a hypocrite you know yeah. so that's why well, I hopefully wanna... in a year from now we're going to own the five acres but so. <laughs> but yeah but something else that i did want to point out though is as she was just saying is that when people do get them when they're small and they just too big and they're like well what do i do with it now and they try to bring to a facility and a lot of facilities won't take them so we personally know people that will take their baby pet alligator that's been raised in an aquarium or a bathtub and has no idea how to live in the wild and they drive them down to Florida and let them go in Florida and then within a week it's dead so illegal by the way super so illegal. illegal you're breaking uh TikTok's well every there. state that you go through first of all you're breaking a law <laughs> yeah you're breaking a ton of laws um plus but, the alligator doesn't get killed yeah so it's super super illegal but then the alligator dies because right. a captive raised alligator now people are going to say oh they're purely instinctual no they're not they do have strong instincts uh, absolutely yes but they're not purely instinctual they do require a level of learning and socialization social learning as a baby that brings up such a good point i don't want to cut you off but i'm going to lose this but you're going to 
Yes. No. You can say it. What are you going to say? Well, now I forgot. I told you this was going to happen. Perfect. My plan worked. So, <laughs> what I was going to say is, um, yeah, so they do have to learn socialization. And I've seen this time and again, uh, either with a, man, she is like determined to go into the couch. Okay, uh, well, crack. I just remembered, and I think it's exactly what you're going to say. Okay. Well, okay. Well, then I'll say mine, and you'll see if you're right. Okay. <laughs> So, um, so we've seen this a couple different times, two different variations of it, where somebody raises it as a baby alone, it has no socialization skills, yes. just like if you raised your child without ever interacting with another child, and you throw it in daycare and it's freaking out. I've seen this happen multiple times. So either they bring it to a captive facility, and then the alligator has no idea how to socialize, and then within, literally within a week or two, it dies from stress of being around others of its own kind, because yeah. it doesn't know how to be an alligator, because it never learned that socialization as a baby. It's not not instinctual, it is a learned behavior. Or they let it go into the wild, and then they come back to check on that same area in a week, and it's dead in the wild. That could also be stress, but in the wild, you don't know because you're not monitoring. But either way, both end up with a dead alligator. Yeah, and that, that's a really important important point. I was literally gonna say the same thing, so good. Job. Okay, there we but, go. But yeah, but um, if you have an alligator now, you're like, oh, okay, well, fine. When it gets too big, I will just drive it to Florida, which don't do that, it's illegal, and find a facility that's gonna take it. Okay, but now you have a, an alligator that's not socialized, and what he just said is, when you put it with other alligators, it freaks out and it literally dies. So I know, we both know a person who is in New York, had an alligator for 30 years, living in a bathtub, and then they drove it to Florida and let it go in the alligator lagoon in a captive facility, and a week later, the thing died, so. Yep, and they stress and they die. I've seen it multiple times. And, but and people don't think like this, and people are just like, well, I'm gonna get an alligator, and I'm gonna raise it, and then I'll figure out when it's too big, but it's like, don't get it in the first place, because it really is, abusive yeah. it really is well this also comes back to what's been going on with the bunnies that we have to pick up when people get an animal and they don't do their homework of how it's going to be when it's bigger or whatever or long term they don't have a plan and then they don't want it anymore and then they dump it and then the animal dies this happens over and over and over alligators rabbits whatever we're talking about when you dump your pet it dies most of the time yeah when i was living in new york i um i worked with a state trooper actually who was also a dog groomer she was awesome but she caught an alligator like a three foot alligator in someone's backyard in new york and they're illegal in new york so obviously somebody either went to pennsylvania and drove it back to new york but then when it gets too big people panic and release it so that animal i don't know what happened to that animal hopefully they found a facility to take it but it's really up to fish and wildlife and they can just kill it but they buy these alligators and then they just release them and that gives everybody who keeps animals and who has permits a bad look and that's why everybody is cracking down even texas now is starting to crack down because we were talking about moving to texas because the laws with wildlife aren't so strict but even they're going to start cracking down so it just ruins it for everybody but then also like the animal suffers and dies yeah so yeah so um okay so to kind of loop this back a little bit for emotional support etc um it's not fair to the alligator. Mm -hmm. Alligators, okay, people are gonna disagree with me on this one. I'm telling you right now, as much as I love Casper, he does not love me the same way. He does not want to cuddle with me. He comes to me because I feed him and because I give him food and he wants the food. Mm -hmm. He doesn't want to cuddle with me and he doesn't love me the same. My dog wants to come over and cuddle with me because they're a social animal. She's sitting right there. Um, they're a social animal that wants to be with you and they want to be with you whether or not you are feeding them or not. They're, they're a social animal. They live in a social group. Alligators don't have this. They do have social, as we were just saying, there, there is a social element to alligators but it's not the same. They don't cuddle with us. They don't see us like that and it just, it just isn't there, guys, okay? I know people are gonna disagree, and they're like, oh, I get it all the time, people fight me all the time. I can see in Casper's eyes that he loves you, and his That's energies. That's a huge thing, like yeah. in Casper's eyes, I see it in Casper's and, eyes. In Casper's eyes, I can see that he loves you, and I'm like, I'm telling you right now, he doesn't. He doesn't. He doesn't. I love him, he does not love me, they are not pets, and uh, okay, okay, here's one that we say all the time, and I'm gonna say it again, and uh, they are not domesticated. And people really need to understand what domestication means. Domestication is a process whereby you breed an animal for hundreds, if not thousands of generations to genetically modify that animal, to breed out its wild instincts and make it something that can live alongside humans. Your dog is GMO. 
Your dog does not exist in nature. It's not a part of the natural world. It's not a normal animal because it is GMO by captive breeding. If you're like, what is he talking about? Look at a pug and look at a wolf and realize they used to be the same thing. So this process of domestication makes these animals reliant on us and makes them want to bond with us because we're making them that way. They can't help but be that way because that's how we made them. This process has not happened with alligators or any wild animal. That's why it's a wild animal, not a domesticated animal. Now you can have a wild animal as a pet. Well, not that you should. I, I don't think you should, but like TikTok is a wild animal. Now there is some argument whether or not ball pythons Even have begun to become domesticated. Birds. But birds the birds, are not domesticated. they're not domesticated. Parrots are not domesticated. They're wild animals. Now they can be pets and they some can bond with you because birds are social and it's natural for them to bond like that. But they're still a wild animal with their wild instincts. And so that's why, uh, you know what I'm trying to say and I'm trying to say it in a nice way. You know I what I'm know. trying to say? It's so hard. I mean, no I'm, matter what you say, people are going to get offended. People are going to be offended and I'm trying to say this in the nicest way I can. but. People they don't say, love you. People say you're you're arrogant and that I'm, you think you know so much more. Just let people be happy. Like you can be happy all you want. We're just trying to say please don't abuse alligators by keeping them as pets and little fish. Well, eat. if somebody wants to argue and be like, you think you know better with your 20 years of hands-on experience doing things that no one in the <laughs> oh world has God. ever what done before. What about that before? person that's like, oh yeah, yeah, your, your, your 20 years experience, I raised an alligator for four years as a baby. Okay, so your experience with your one alligator definitely makes you more knowledgeable than him in multiple countries catching and, different well, crocodilians and alligators. Okay, so, okay. Well, well, here's the other thing too, is that uh, people are people also argue like this guy with the emotional support alligator. He's He said in the video that he's worked with alligators for 19 years. Oh my God, it's, it's basically the same amount of time, right? How many alligators did he work with within that time frame? Right. Uh, four or five, maybe maybe a dozen to be generous. Several hundred, if not thousands of alligators that I have handled and worked with over that time frame. Right, that's like us saying that we've worked with penguins for like 10 years, but yeah. we only worked with penguins oh, for yeah. like a year, nine months, nine, yeah. nine years ago. You, you can't, know? yeah, I mean, so it's like, when, when people are saying you're being arrogant about your experience, like no, because I don't count myself as a penguin expert. I raised penguins. I worked with penguins for literally years. Both of us did. I'm not a penguin expert. I know more than like 99.9% .9 of people about penguins. How many I... species of penguins are there? 27? I thought it was 13. Or maybe there's only 13 more mother Edit ones? that part out. <laughs> <laughs> We're not using that. Right. That's why I'm not a penguin expert, okay? <laughs> so I'm not an expert. I took care of them. I worked with them for years, but I'm not going to sit here and tell you I'm a penguin expert. I'm not a ball python expert. I've kept a lot of ball pythons and I've caught ball pythons, you know, escaped ones here in Florida that are wild. I've worked with a lot of ball pythons. I own ball pythons, but I am not Brian Barczyk. I'm not a, pyth a ball python expert, you know? I had like, that's the this thing. This is now 23 minutes with TikTok. <sighs> It's supposed to be 10, well, whatever. It's, <laughs> it, it is what it is, okay? I really want to talk about bringing, there's Jelly Bean in the background screaming, uh, about bringing like crocodilians into pet stores. Cause like okay. that's something that I see a lot and it's just, it puts a really bad taste in my mouth. So 10 minutes with TikTok should be considered a podcast, by the way. Should we do like 30 minutes with TikTok? Sure, it, it is whatever it becomes. Cause I mean, 29 minutes. this is a long form podcast. That's, that's basically what this is I, at this point. Every time we okay? do, yeah. because, Well, I wanna hit these topics. I wanna, and you wanna talk about this pet store thing. You yeah. should be able to. Don't feel constrained by time because some people are very interested in this stuff. And if you've been watching uh, lately my stories, I've been talking a lot about how the social media algorithm is really preventing us from having long form conversations. Right. And for the survival of my channels, I have limited the time that I spend on videos and I hate it. So YouTube is not like that so far yet. <laughs> yet it probably will be well, just unfortunately the shorts. So it's like, it is going that way. But this is a topic that I would also like to talk about a lot just yeah. as far as our social media goes. But the point is on YouTube, we're still allowed to do long form things. And so we should do that and take advantage of it. So go ahead, pet stores. Yeah. I mean, again, it just, so most people at pet stores, you have to think it's people who have cats, have dogs, maybe have like a bird, a ferret. So when they see something like an alligator come in, it's just so crazy and exotic, exotic. and they're going to be talking about it for weeks and taking pictures and then things like that go viral. And that's where it becomes dangerous because that's when everybody wants to go out and get an alligator. It's, we, had the same thing with mini pigs. There are people out there that still think that mini pigs are a thing. That was probably, I was when I was in, in high school. So 
that was, oh my God, that was that like 11 years ago? I feel so old, probably like 11 years ago. And everybody wanted a mini pig and it was like this trend and that's all that you would see. And I feel like it's, it's the same thing with alligators. You agree? Yeah. I mean, that's not beneficial to the animal. That's not enrichment for the animal. There's a million other things you can well, do. Your, your alligator is not getting enrichment at the pet store. Yeah, let's spell that out. So when you bring your most dogs, um, if your dog is somewhat trained and socialized and you bring it to a pet store, it's a positive experience. Most dogs enjoy it. You know, and then as soon as you're even pulling in the parking lot, they know and they're happy, they're excited about right. it. And you bring an alligator into a pet store, he's not looking around like, oh my God, this is great, I love it. No, they're stressed by it. By you know? the way, because now that I'm thinking about it, there is a viral video of Emily, I think her husband's name is Ed from Snake Discovery. They're actually really awesome people and they have an alligator that they rescued that they brought to like a pet store for like a video. but. That's not who we're talking well, about. They no, actually okay. do really good work. We're well, talking about the Facebook people. That let me are... make this make sense. Okay, so let, <laughs> let's make this. They're an actual like reptile facility, and they know. So I I brought I brought alligators um, to schools and whatnot with a proper permit. Right. Does the alligator enjoy going to the school? No. Why do I do it? Because it's not. I'm not making it super stressful. It's it's not enjoying it. I'm not gonna lie to you and be like I'm perfect and the alligator enjoys it because it's with me. I'm not gonna lie. It does not enjoy that experience, but that slightly negative experience for the animal is outweighed by the positive experience of being able to educate people about the animal. So when you're right. doing actual educational outreach, it may be slightly stressful for the animal, but that can be overweighed by the educational benefits if you're handling it in the right way and you're not making it like all horribly stressful. But to paint it as if the animal likes doing this thing, like a dog likes doing this thing, right. that's what I'm getting at. That's what's incorrect about it. Like in, in that, that um, the video with the motionless part alligator, like it's going to the mall, it's going to yeah. restaurants. And it's like, oh, it loves seeing people. Loves he seeing loves giving kids. kisses and yeah. being in cuddles. Now, what we're doing right now with TikTok, you keep on seeing TikTok keeps on trying to go back here. She wants to go in between the couch cushions and hide because being out in the open like this is not really natural for a ball python especially in the full light like this it feels like it is potentially available for a predator to eat so it wants to go hide and i am selfishly forcing tiktok to be outside and not hide in my couch because i want to show tiktok to educate you guys so here we are we'll also get stuck and also get stuck. But the point is that here we are balancing um, making this animal, we are making this animal do something it doesn't want to do, which is true, because we're making it educational. Now at the same time, obviously TikTok is not stressed by the situation. Right. Yeah, she would rather not do this, but she's perfectly fine with the situation. And even right now, what is she doing? Is she coming over to give me a kiss because she loves me? No, yes. she's looking for a way out. Look, if I let her do this, what she's gonna do, and if I hold her here, um, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna, I'm gonna read her mind and use my chakra energy, okay? <laughs> and I'm gonna read her mind and tell you that she's gonna go up my head and she's gonna go down my back and she's gonna disappear into my couch cushion if I let her because she wants to get away. She's not coming up to my face to give me a kiss and love me. She's like, I don't like this. I feel like I'm gonna be eaten. I'm exposed to a potential predator and I need to go hide. So when you bring these animals to these situations, it depends on what you're doing it for. What is the net benefit? What's the outcome? How stressed is the animal? And how much of this are you doing for attention or education? Right, there, there's a certain cutoff where it becomes more about you than the animal. Right. I mean, and a lot of people like that attention, which is weird because I've never been like that. Like, ask Chris, when we catch alligators in people's backyards, I'm like, okay, let's do this as quickly as possible so no one comes out, no one's taking pictures and videos. Like, I don't want, I want to be as quickly, like, quick as possible, get it in the car so, like, we don't have 30,000 people. But some people just, like, get off on that and really like that. So, yeah, they love the attention. I'm holding yeah. my hat because you're going to rip it off my head at this point. Yeah. But, um, but yeah, so. When we do um, educational expos and things like that, and we bring an animal, the animal isn't there because it, we didn't bring the animal there because it likes to be there. When we're talking about a snake or a dog, we're bringing it there for the educational value that is presented. The animal would rather not do those things. I mean, there's certain animals because people ask. Some like, do like it. Like the dog would like it, the pig would like it, Cupid would like it. Some of the birds it, the probably birds like it. like it, yeah. Uh, but like an alligator. Eh. My, my prediction was wrong because she felt like she was going to slide off. I was, <laughs> but she just felt like she was going to slide off. But, um, but either way, repeatedly trying to go into the couch cushion does prove what I was trying to say. Can we hit all the points you wanted to hit or? Um, so something I just wanted to try to emphasize a little bit more, we did, we did talk about this, was just the growth thing and just how severely stunted a lot of these you know, pet alligators are right. and how that's not fair. And get, to give you the example, um, if you have an alligator that's 20 years old and it's only about four or five feet and it should be you know, eight to 10, maybe even 12 feet, you know, uh, well, 
back that up for a second. Size has to do with diet and environmental factors, not on age, okay? So they're not gonna grow to a certain size based on age, it has a lot more factors involved. So that's why I'm saying like, you could have an age, a size range of eight to 12 feet, depending upon the gender of the alligator and other factors. But anyways, literally double the size. Let's just, let's just put it, that's being super generous. Let's say it should be double its size within that time frame even though realistically it could be triple or quadruple its size, but let's just say double to make it simple, okay? Imagine if you had two twin children and you enroll them in school together, whatever, and they have the exact same genetics and one of them is literally twice as tall as the other one. Now let's say we, we just, they're 20 years old, okay? So you have your twin kids that are 20 years old and one of them is, a, uh, is two feet tall. That's obviously not realistic for humans, that's not possible, but let's say they're two feet tall and then their normal sibling is six feet tall. We, and you know, that's, that's triple the size difference, which is literally what we're talking about. Imagine I have a twin brother who's two feet tall because of how we raised him, because of how we fed him, and because of how we made him live in a box instead of like a normal setting. That would be child abuse, a hundred million percent. That would be child abuse. But that's what we're doing to these animals and it's not seen as animal abuse. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah, like, I mean, that, that's literally what it is. It, it is abusive to, to have that animal be that deformed because of your care. Right. I mean, that's crazy, you know? Or, or, I mean, just to really put that in perspective, I'm the small one. I'm the small one at six foot five, and because my growth has been stunted, and my brother is 18 feet tall. What? Like, that's insane. You know, imagine my brother being 18 feet tall, and I'm the one that had stunted growth. Like, this is what we're talking about here. This is a monumental size difference based completely upon the care given. I think once we show pictures of like the normal gators and like the sunny gators, people are kind of gonna start to to see and then they're gonna start to pay attention. Cause like I said, unless you know what to look for, like you don't understand. Yeah, you know? yeah, well I, I, that's why I like the human comparison of just being like, that's nuts, that's wild. Imagine being three times your size. It's you so know? funny, Chris and I, like we'll, we'll see a gator like online that someone um, has and we'll send it to each other and like the immediate reaction is like, that is a messed up looking gator. Like that thing is totally screwed. Yeah. So, and it, it's, it's sad, I mean, we're, we're laughing about it, but it really is sad. You know? So, well, it's to the point, it's so recognizable that right. when we it's see- it's just ridiculous. It's well, like, oh my God, that gator is. If we see an alligator that's even, even caught in Florida, where they're supposed to be, right? And it's caught out of the wild, I can be like 100% that alligator is somebody's pet. I can look at it and I can recognize a wild alligator versus a captive raised alligator and be like, oh, that's a wild gator, that's a normal nuisance wild alligator. Oh, that one that showed up in somebody's backyard? That's because it was let go by the neighbor, it's 100%. It's very obvious with their face, like it's, it's just very thick, you know, yeah. so. Okay, now do we touch on everything we wanted to touch on? I think so. Okay, well, in that case, I think we hit everything we wanted to talk about. And uh, if you have questions, other uh, other questions we should address on this, comments, anything like that, please let us know in the comments. You know, we want to try to engage with you guys and, and really try to explore this avenue a little bit more. And then also let us know, do you like these long form videos that go into great detail? Because personally, I really do. Now, unfortunately, I know most people's attention span are not gonna handle a half hour video, you right. know? I mean, again, if, you're, if you follow me on Instagram, I literally posted the other day, when I put up a 10 minute informational video, most people don't make it past a minute or even 30 seconds, you know? Because again, things like, like TikTok especially is an app that is training our attention span to be shorter, literally training us to be dumber. It's, I can rant about this for she's so hours. Cute. Look oh, at she's super face. cute. But um, this is something I'm like, I feel really passionately about that like I would love to even just do this as, as like a little podcast thing just to talk about how social media is literally altering the way that we think and how we're able to educate ourselves because our attention span is being altered so, so greatly. But anyways. And, and again, we don't want to be the channel that like tears other people down. Like that is not what we're trying to do, but it's, it's so hard to find the balance of so many people asking you, what about this, what about this, what about this? So it's like we have to discuss it, we have to share our opinion, but that doesn't mean we're, we're trying to tear somebody else down. Like, yeah. This is just like our opinion. Yeah, this emotional support alligator guy loves his gator. There's no doubt about that. He's not a bad guy. We just don't agree with the taking it to the pet store and the mall and it giving kisses. And yeah, and 
it's so easy for me to be like, I'm not saying he's doing this, but I've said this before. If I was saying that Casper loves me, and when I and when he comes up for me for food, because he wants me to feed him, but when he comes up to me looking for food, oh my God, he's kissing me. He loves me. Guys, look at that much he loves me. If I was saying that stuff, you know how much more popular we would be? Yeah. Because people love that stuff. But we are more dedicated to being educational than attention seeking, and which is not good for our channel. <laughs> it's not good for us yeah. as far as a business standpoint goes. But that's what we're trying to do. A toucan is going crazy. He's very loud. <laughs> See, as soon as I stop, he's done. Um, but he feels my intensity as I'm speaking. He's, oh, I want to be a part of that conversation. Jelly bean. <laughs> okay. But, um, but, but yeah, so because we're trying to be more educational on that, but if we weren't, I know better. I'm saying this guy probably doesn't know better, and that's why I'm not saying he's a bad guy. Um, but, uh, but because we know better, we're not going to do that thing. But if we did do that thing, we'd be a lot more popular. Yeah. But anyways, on that note, let us know in the comments, guys, what you think, and uh, hopefully you enjoyed the video. Hopefully you learned a lot, and uh, we'll see you guys in the next one. Should we try to do a quick jelly bean update? Let's see if he'll come out. Uh, if you want to. Oh, we're going to try it. Can you see me? Can you see me? Mm-hmm. Jelly bean update! I can hold him now. But I'm click or trading him. We're gonna have a video soon. I just literally want to show everybody since he's making such noise. Okay, bye. <laughs>